What's up everybody, Rebel here, and I know I just made a video talking about some of the flaws, or my main flaw with Crash Bandicoot 4, so today I wanted to talk about things that I would like to see in a potential Crash Bandicoot 5. Let's get into it. Darn you, Crash Bandicoot! So how's everybody doing today? I do want to clarify when I say potential Crash Bandicoot 5 that I'm pretty sure there is going to be a Crash Bandicoot 5. And I know you could say because of the sales that Activision might not seek to keep doing this franchise, but here's the thing about Activision. They have set out to put out one family-friendly game a year. And being that they just had the Insane Trilogy, the Reignited Trilogy, Crash Team Racing, Crash 4. So I do feel like Crash and Spyro are the two franchises that they are going to use to meet that family-friendly quota. And I know Crash 4's difficulty makes it far from family-friendly, but just don't tell Activision that. I don't think they know. So assuming that Activision is going to keep milking Crash Bandicoot as its family-friendly franchise along with Spyro, Crash Bandicoot 5 might be coming out in 2022, 2023. Who who knows, but I did want to talk about 10 things that I would like to see in a potential sequel to Crash 4. So the first thing I would like to see are I, I, new moves, new masks, or new gimmicks. And I do want to kind of dive into that. I don't just want new moves and new gimmicks. Yeah, throw us the bazooka, even though that thing's kind of pointless in hindsight. Give us new... Give us new gimmicks, because that turned out so good in Crash Bandicoot 3. When I say new moves, I mean something that is going to enhance the platforming and the platforming challenge of Crash Bandicoot. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would fit that sort of position of a new move. I, I'm pretty sure that when there was Crash 1, I wouldn't be the one to think about adding a slide and a slide jump to it, but someone thought of that, so I'm pretty sure someone can think of one new move that would just really benefit Crash Bandicoot. Like, what does Triangle do? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure they could think of a new move to fill that. New masks. What In, in Crash 4, the masks are used to enhance your platforming. They essentially give you new moves, if only temporarily. And I'd love to see new masks added, or a way to, a way to actually make all of the masks really, really fun, because some of the masks, I will say, are more situational. Kapunawa and uh, Lonnie Loli are pretty much, as long as the platforms can be mapped to switching with the, with the map switching, that can be applied to almost any sort of platforming challenge. However, the tornado spin and the go into the ceiling with Ika Ika, those might be a little more situational, so if they could find a way to utilize some of the masks, introduce new masks with, for lack of a better word, better uh, abilities, I think that would be pretty awesome. And new gimmicks. I did kind of like the jet ski in Crash 3. I did. I hated the motorcycle, so I don't want anything that's going to be like the motorcycle. I do remember the jetpack in Crash 2 being a little bit wonky to control, but it wasn't too hard, and I didn't really die from it. So I actually think something like that would actually be pretty cool, especially considering the way that that uh, Toys for Bob had built levels really long in this game to, to give that ability to add a chase section or to add a writing section somewhere in the level, but to not make the whole level a chase level, which which in the first two, which in the first game, you know, maybe the first two games, the chase levels can get very repetitive and seem kind of bland. So adding that into a normal stage really fixes that issue. And I feel like if they were to add a jet pack or a jet ski, like for Coco, or something like that to the game for just the temporary section in a level it would actually be pretty cool. The second thing I'd love to see in the game would be more bosses. I feel like Toys for Bob proved that they can handle bosses and they can make bosses very very well so I am very sad that there were only five bosses and a bonus boss, a mini boss, in Crash Bandicoot 4. That's, you know, I guess half of a boss less than how many bosses were in Crash 1 and half of a boss more than in Crash 2 and 3. But after Crash 1 and how weak those bosses were, I think less bosses was a perfect choice for Naughty Dog because that was definitely not their st strong suit. However, I do feel like Toys for Bob have proven themselves with the bosses in Crash 4, and I think they should they, they should take it onto themselves to add a few more bosses. There are a bunch of characters that people did want to see in Crash 4 that did not make an appearance, a lot of enemies. Uh, Ripperoo made a slight cameo. Tiny Tiger, Koala Kong, Pinstripe Porteroo, the Komodo Brothers, the list crunch. The list goes on and on of, of the amount of bosses that they have a pool to choose from and they could even introduce some new bosses of their own. If they want to add more mini bosses to stages, I think that would be awesome. I think Luis 
was handled very well in the game. Not one of my favorite bosses. Uh, it was very situational being that you're on a jet board the whole time, but I still think that it was very, very cool of them to have added a mini boss at the end of a level that wasn't a full-fledged boss. I want to see more of those, and I want to see more bosses. If Toys for Bob is going to be doing this, which I guess I'll make a video explaining why that is, why I have that logic in my head that Toys for Bob will be... Oh my god, will Toys for Bob be doing a Crash 5? Is Toys for Bob doing Spyro 4 or Crash 5? Who knows? I don't know. I'll get into that some other time. The third thing I want to see in Crash Bandicoot 5 would be better inverted modes. Yes, I do want to see a return to inverted modes. I knew it was just mirror mode, but, you know, I don't care if it's padding. It's mirror mode. You know, it's supposed to be like, oh, remember doing this? Well, hell, it's the same, but a little different. It's that whole trope, and it's fine with me. I don't really care. So long as they make the gameplay different. I want to see different gameplay. I want to see something that makes you play the game differently, whether that's adjusting for a faster speed, increasing the challenge of platforming, adding a slow-mo effect, making your reaction time really, really lagged it, it, it just makes the game more interesting the echolocation i think all of those inverted themes were done very well and i would not mind seeing a whole other thing of inverted modes as long as they will change the gameplay you know i feel as long as it changes the gameplay makes it a little bit different that should be fine that should be acceptable the fourth thing I want to see are better timeline levels. I want to see them handled better if they are going to do them at all. The way I would probably suggest doing them would don't be making them timeline levels. Make the make the level with Dingo, Tana, or Cortex, or whoever the extra playable characters are going to be. Man, I didn't even list that, but that's another thing that they could add is more playable characters, different playable characters. Even if it's just Tana and Dingo Dial again, not Cortex, I would be fine with that if they gave them full-fledged levels not just one introduction level that's mandatory but i want to see their levels how they really fit in the timeline i know i explained the tana introduction stage leading to crash and coco tied up i want to see that for all of the timeline stages i don't want to continue playing the level with crash or coco with boxes moved around that's a little bit bland i want a whole i want whole levels for those characters and sure make them optional because people might not want to play them it might be too different of a gameplay style to want to play their whole level while you're playing a game a crash bandicoot game not a dingo dial game but i do think if they had their own levels completely no mixed stages that would be so much better the fifth thing i'd want to see and this is kind of going off of one of my more recent videos about one of my big flaws of crash bandicoot 4 is i want a better story i know it's hard to say i want more out of my crash bandicoot story it's it's crash bandicoot its point isn't its story its point is its platforming the story is just kind of there to coast you along but the thing is toys for bob kind of made a story that we're kind of that we don't really know what happens between the levels what leads from one level to another they have these ideas in their heads in in, in on a on a drawing board on a storyboard in the art book they have the they have this information and if they make this information for themselves to know what they're doing with the levels i think we should be privy to that information as well i wouldn't mind a narrator between the levels telling us what's going on how did crash and coco go from right in the heart of new orleans to in the middle of a bayou just a little paragraph a couple of sentences explaining that will go a long way the sixth thing i would like to see in the game is a reworking of the gems the the 40, 60, 80% of the Wumpa is a little weird, you know, then there's the whole getting all three boxes and then the hidden gem and then to get the insanely perfect relic you have to basically get all of the gems except the hidden gem. It's just kind of strange the way that they made the gems work and I feel like they, they didn't figure it out completely right and that's probably something that might have been bugging some people there maybe we could have done this a little bit better and i feel like they could have too so i just want them to keep reworking the way the gems are gathered i'm not a huge fan of the of the six gems a level thing i mean i guess in theory if they did it differently then it might be okay but the current way of the six gems per level and then six gems per inverted stage and then six gems per the timeline levels that are essentially half of the original level i feel like 
reworking the way the gems are gathered would just be a little bit... Uh, add some variability to the game. Make Crash 5 stand out a little bit differently than Crash 4. I don't want the same game. I don't want a, a continuation of Crash 4. I want them to try to do things a little differently. I do want there to be a difference between the two games. It's like Crash 1 to Crash 2. You know, there was that difference, and I don't think that difference was really as recognizable in Crash 2 to Crash 3, except for there were just more gimmicks. But you kind of get what I'm getting at. The way you get gems in Crash 1 and Crash 2 are different. I wouldn't mind seeing something a little different. The seventh thing that I would like to see might be, and this I'm completely up in the air too, they could do the same thing they did in Crash 4, and I wouldn't bat an eyelash. However, but the, another difference between Crash 1 and Crash 2 is the way the level selection worked with the addition of Crash 2's warp rooms. Do I want a warp room? You know, I feel like the warp rooms kind of divide the dimensions too much, and I do like the idea of keeping every level theme together in on a on sort of a progression scale you know it goes from here now you're here and now you're here and they're all three different levels based in you know somewhat similar areas but still noticeably different i really liked that this game pulled that off in a couple of dimensions with a couple of levels but then there are ways how like uh, this is a weird example glover glover had little rooms you could go into that were kind of themed and then they had levels tied to that theme i wouldn't mind seeing something like that a sort of war room hub area if you will that does have every dimension kind of tied in that hub area i feel like that would just be like hey cool it's like a it's like a hub a hub room we went from a, a straight line to a hub room from crash four to five just like one to two people would talk about that and it'd be something useless that they could do that would just be kind of cool. The eighth thing I really want to see and I'm kind of shocked this wasn't in this they did bring in a lot from Crash 2 but one thing they did not bring in from Crash 2 are secret exits and secret entrances to levels with a secret warp room. Secret levels. There were levels that you couldn't find in the normal warp room. You had to find two of the secret levels three of the secret levels. I can't remember. Through a secret exit in a level and I am kind of disappointed we didn't get to see that in Crash 4 so I'm really hoping they add some some really some really clever but figure outable secrets into crash 5 that's what i want to see and the ninth thing that i want to see in crash 5 and i did kind of scrape on this a little bit earlier is i want to see more diversity in the dimensions more variety in the dimensions some of the dimensions like the uh the uh, agapus dimension was basically all just prehistoric levels there was no clear uh, progression through the levels unlike how cortex castle you start in the nitro processing tunnels you make your way into um, you know, more mining tunnels that end up going through the lava waterfall up to Cortex's castle. You progress through a stage into a different stage that's further on the timeline. It's part of the story. You're kind of going from one place to another place in the same overall theme, but with a very, very more pinpoint, uh, pinpoint, with your attention more pinpointed onto one specific sort of thing for each level. And I think they missed a couple opportunities with diversity in progression in dimensions and that's something that i feel like they could do a little bit better try a little bit harder on in crash 5 and i feel like it would make the levels stand out even more you know and the last thing i want to see of course new levels new dimensions rehashed level themes from crash 2 or crash 3 or crash 1 that weren't brought into crash 4 anything like that would be very cool to see i don't care if they're brand new i don't care if they're rehashed i know they were gonna probably end up trying to do this anyway so this is kind of a moot point but it is something i did want to bring up what kind of levels could they do well there were a few themes in crash 3 that they did not bring into this game there's the medieval theme the egypt theme the underwater theme and the arabian theme and from crash 2 and i think this was in crash 3 and 1 the firefly theme was in all the crashes very sad we didn't see a firefly theme level in crash uh, 4 something to where the stage goes completely dark i guess they kind of tried to do that with the inverted themes but they only did it on a couple stages it wasn't enough for it to be e even remotely cool and i'm talking about the uh, the uh, ins insanity island inverted theme the 
Hazardous Waste Inverted Theme doesn't even really get that dark. I wouldn't count that as a Firefly potential. I do want to see Firefly levels added though. I really do. And then the Ruin levels. The Ruin levels were completely gone from Crash 1 and Crash 2. I wouldn't mind a whole dimension that's just ancient Aztec ruins or something like that. And with any of these, maybe I don't want to see underwater levels at the underwater inverted theme. It's probably good enough to fill my underwater needs. But hello, Lego bring them back. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't bet too much of an eyelash as long as they made them better. I do kind of want jetpack levels to return is, is a s s little segment, you know, but for like medieval theme, if they were to bring some of these themes back, I really would like to see, as I said, is number nine. I want to see diversity in level progression. I want to see diversity in the levels through dimension progression. However, you'd want to word that. If it's a medieval theme, maybe have it be around some tents and smaller, smaller shacks outside for the first level. And then the second level, you're you know, going through some troops uh, under a moat into the bottom of the castle. In the third stage, you're going through the halls of the castle up to a throne room or something. If they were to do the Egyptian levels, you could be outside. It could be sort of like a desert level with sand traps and stuff like that. And then the third, the second level, you're scaling up a pyramid. You're scaling up towers, a sphinx, stuff like that. And then the third stage, you get into Egyptian tombs and you're inside the tomb the whole time. For uh, ruin levels, they could have it, you know, the same. You're going through a jungle yes another jungle level rebel or more, more jungle levels yeah i don't think there were enough jungle levels in crash 4 i mean in, in, throughout the insane trilogy there's enough jungle levels to, to completely quell me over for the end of time but if they were to make ruin levels the first one could be a jungle the second stage could be outside of the ruins and the third stage could be inside of the ruins it's a very similar thing over and over but i do feel like it would create the perfect amount of level diversity to keep the people talking to have everybody loving the levels if they don't love all of them, there's got to be something you could do with so much theme progression that there's bound to be a level that people would just fall in love with. Kind of like Crash Landed. I do think Crash Landed is a great level based on its theme. Maybe not its overall level layout with the platforming, but you know, I've already discussed that. And those are 10 things that I would love to see in a potential Crash 4 sequel. Do you think there will be a Crash 5? Do you? I'm pretty sure there will be. What would you want to see in Crash 5? Any of the things I listed uh, above, below, previously, back in time? Besides that, that's that's it. Smash that like button if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe for more Crash videos and other similar videos in the collectathon platforming genre. Spyro. I do you like Spyro? I love Spyro. I'm going to be talking a lot about Spyro because I am putting all of my eggs in the basket that we are going to be getting a Spyro for. I could probably make a video about why everyone thinks there's going to be a Spyro for. It was in an art book for Crash 4's art. So it's basically confirmed, Spyro 4. So yeah, replaying the Spyro Reignited trilogy, talking about Spyro. I'll still be talking about Crash, you know, probably get some ideas here and there. And uh, besides that, make sure you're subscribed for more great content, hit the notification bell, so you remain notified for my posts and stuff like that. And until next time, 